Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to the latest edition of You Make the Call. I'm going to show you one slide, two images, and I'm going to ask you for an answer. It's not always going to be easy. It's going to make you think, and hopefully we'll all learn something together. So, let's get started. What about this? Well, this patient had a cough, and there's something in the left lung. If you look hard right in the middle, it measures minus 113 Hounsfield units. That's fat. There's rim calcification. There's loss of volume in the left lung. Now, if you're a more senior radiologist, the more senior, the better. You would know what we're dealing with here. And this was an oleothorax. Remember in the old days, they put ping pong balls in the chest. They would take out the lung and put ping pong balls to get better aeration of the chest compress the normal lung. Same thing with oleothorax. That was fat, olive oil put in the lung, calcifications happened. Oleothorax, the intrapleural or extrapleural installation of mineral or vegetable oil in the pleural space, widely used till the late 1940s. It was a form of collapse therapy used to inhibit the multiplication and dissemination of mycobacterium TB. Okay, wonderful. You always walking around with an extra quart of oil. Not what you want to do. Not something we do anymore. And here's the original article which said how brilliant it was in the early 1900s. Patient short of breath. When you look quickly, it looks like there's an infiltrate. You also see loss of volume in the left lung, but I'm telling you that patient had prior lung surgery if you had all the images. When you look at the right lung, there's infiltrates, but the pattern is really a lymphangitic type pattern. Yes, you could think of failure, but you don't have it on both sides. Yes, you could think about an infiltrate, possibly, but what you gotta think about is a lymphangitic spread. Most commonly, it's due to tumor. And in this case, it was due to non-small cell lung cancer. Beautiful example of infiltration all the septations, and the patient did have a lung cancer previously in the left upper lobe, which was resected, hence the loss of volume in the left lung. And here's some more images, just a beautiful pattern. Yes, we can see infection, fluid overload, but when you see this, you gotta be thinking about tumor. Of course, when the patient has had a tumor, recurrence is an easy diagnosis. Chronic cough. Look at the first image on the left, and I was just gonna give you two axials, dilated esophagus. Well, it could be obstruction, right? The patient could have swallowed a piece of steak. Maybe that's the reason. Patient could have a cancer of the lower esophagus or G junction. That's a possibility. Patient can have a stricture from lye ingestion. When you look at the image in the coronal, you see the dilated esophagus goes to the G junction. The stomach is not distended. You don't have all the image is I could give you, but this is the classic appearance for what? For achalasia. Dilated esophagus, fluid fluid level, extending to the GE junction, often going up the full length of the esophagus, depending how uh, long the patients had an issue. These patients can aspirate. These patients have an increased incidence of esophageal and lung cancer. Just a beautiful case of achalasia. And here it is again on the coronal view. This patient had chest pain post MVA. I think what you recognize on these two images is a soft tissue around the distal arch and proximal descending thoracic aorta. There's a regularity in the descending thoracic aorta. That's a focal dissection. And there's an intramural hematoma present. This is the classic appearance. Don't make a mistake. Don't assume this is motion or some soft tissue thickening. No, no, this is a dissection. This is an emergency. This patient will be taken to surgery and typically a stent will be placed. If not, this patient could have rupture of the aorta. So when you ask me for the diagnosis, aortic transection. Patient was lucky the patient survived to get scanned and survived to get a repair an important and rapid diagnosis. 
Here it is on the sagittal views, showing nicely the length of intramural hematoma. When you're looking at the aorta, you got to look at the coronals, you got to look at the sagittals, and often, particularly with vascular injury, the 3Ds, volume rendering, are particularly valuable in looking at extent and involvement and its presence. And here it is, cinematic. Look at that beautiful example of a dissection past the left subclavian artery. Patient was very lucky. Stent was placed. Patient did great. What about this case? Chest pain is shortness of breath. Nothing tricky. There's a mass in the left atrium. It's posteriorly placed. There's no calcification. What could it be? Well, the typical thing, most common tumor is an atrial myxoma. More common in the left atrium, where this is usually near the fossovallus, not necessarily in this case, but it doesn't have the look, the irregularity of a thrombus, not a great location. Thrombus also seen in the right atrium and left atrium where a catheter has placed or a catheter is present. This is not gonna be a med in all likelihood. This was a left atrial myxoma. That's the best diagnosis. What about this case? You see a filling defect in the patient's right atrium. Could it be a tumor? Atrial myxomas, like the last case, are more common in the left atrium, less common in the right atrium. When you have these images, you want to look carefully if the patient has a catheter in place, if the patient has a, had a catheter removed. That area is a great area for thrombus. And this indeed was a thrombus. If you look at the coronal view, there's a catheter in place and the thrombus is sitting off the bottom of the catheter. So when I see it in the right atrium, but it could be in the left atrium as well, you gotta think thrombus as well. Size, density, all that could be the same between thrombus and an atrial myxoma, but location and the presence of a catheter really makes your life easy, and you can be very exact in terms of diagnosis. Patient has back pain. What's going on? What are all those little dots in the posterior aspect of the left iliac crest and also in the right side? What exactly is going on here? It doesn't look like infection. It doesn't look like metastasis. There's so many little dots over a strategic area. And I show you this case because once you've seen it, you'll never forget that appearance. Bilateral, little tiny lesions. It looks like the patient had bone marrow harvesting, and that's what this was. This was a patient who had bone marrow harvesting, a uh, very, very classic appearance, very, very important to recognize. We've often seen hemorrhage, which was the issue in this case, or suspected hemorrhage, patient having pain post-procedure. Looks like a painful procedure. Obviously it is, but that's what it looks like. This patient has back pain. You look and there's a soft tissue mass by the coccyx. Uh, it's destructive. What could it be? Now it could be metastasis, recurrent rectal cancer, but there's no tumor in the rectum here. And that's usually direct extension and you see bone destruction. Things that involve the lower sacrum or the coccyx, you always got to think about chordoma. Chordoma can cause bone destruction. There is some here. It's soft tissue mass. The mass usually is not very much enhancing, but location, the uh, sacrum and coccyx is a great location. And the differential diagnosis and the end diagnosis was chordoma. You can think about giant cell tumor. You can think about metastasis. Soft tissue mass is lymphoma, but location, location, everything. It's real estate and it's in tumors as well. Here it is nicely shown again on the sagittal view. Another patient with back pain. I sometimes like to show two cases with the same diagnosis. Yes, this could be a med to the sacrum. Yes, this could be a giant cell tumor. And it also can be a chordoma. Expansion and destruction, the matrix being present, that's a really good look for chordoma. Yes, it could be metastatic disease, giant cell tumor occasionally but chordoma till proven otherwise, and this was a chordoma. Nicely shown in the axial and nicely shown in the coronal. Again, location, soft tissue mass, bone destruction, expansion in the canal. You got to be thinking about chordoma. Well, that's it, guys. I gave you a bunch of cases. So for me, 
for all of us at CTSS. I hope you enjoyed uh, this set of cases, this new series we've come up with, and I'll see you next time. Have a great day. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.